Cardiac resynchronization therapy, or CRT for short, is now an established treatment for heart failure patients with severe left ventricular systolic dysfunction and a wide QRS complex on the surface ECG. The wide QRS complex is indicative of dyssynchronous contraction between the left and right ventricles, which is detrimental to cardiac function. By implanting a pacemaker with separate leads to the right and left sides of the heart, this dyssynchrony can be effectively reduced. As well as improving heart failure symptoms, randomised controlled trials have established that CRT can improve outcomes by reducing mortality and heart failure hospitalisation. However, a number of aspects with regard to patient selection for CRT remain controversial. Over 75% of patients enrolled into CRT trials have left bundle branch block QRS morphology, and the efficacy of CRT in these patients is well established. This is reflected in current international guidelines. For example, the 2013 European Society of Cardiology guidelines on cardiac pacing and CRT give a class 1 recommendation for CRT in patients with left bundle branch block QRS morphology with a QRS duration of greater than 120 milliseconds. However, a minority of patients in the trials, approximately 25%, have non-left bundle branch block QRS morphology, which can be either right bundle branch block or a non-specific intraventricular conduction delay that does not fit the diagnostic criteria for either left or right bundle branch block. The efficacy of CRT in these patients is less well established, and previous trial analyses have suggested a lack of prognostic benefit in patients with non-left bundle branch block morphology. Despite this, CRT continues to be recommended in these patients, albeit with the weaker strength of recommendation compared to patients with left bundle branch block. To date, there has been no dedicated trial of CRT in patients with non-left bundle branch block QRS morphology. The purpose of our study was to assess the efficacy of CRT in non-left bundle branch block patients through meta-analysis of previous uh, CRT trials. We performed a literature search for randomised control trials of CRT that reported death and or heart failure hospitalisation according to QRS morphology. Our search found six trials which enrolled nearly 7,000 patients of whom approximately 1,700 had non-left bundle branch block morphology. This study represents the largest meta-analysis of CRT published to date. The findings of our study demonstrated no significant reduction in mortality or heart failure hospitalisation in patients with non-left bundle branch block morphology. These findings are therefore contradictory to current CRT guidelines, which continue to advocate CRT in non-left bundle branch block patients. Our study does have its limitations, and there are a few caveats to bear in mind when interpreting these data. The first is that this study used subgroup data in the analysis as opposed to individual patient level data to which we did not have access. Individual patient level meta-analyses are more useful in examining interactions between important clinical variables. For example, in the case of CRT, it would be informative to tease out the complex interaction between QRS morphology and QRS duration, which is another important predictor of CRT response. It is also worth emphasising that our study used uh, only hard endpoints of death and heart failure hospitalisation and not symptom-driven endpoints such as improvement in quality of life or improved exercise capacity. As such, our data cannot exclude a symptomatic benefit of CRT in these patients, although it is recognised that measurement of these softer endpoints is more prone to subjectivity. In summary, our meta-analysis shows no reduction in mortality or heart failure hospitalisation from CRT in patients with non-left bundle branch block QRS morphology. As a result, we believe clinicians should consider the potential risks and benefits carefully before implanting CRT devices in this group of patients.